Our first task is to connect the type 1 and type 2 descriptions of total product curves, which we had discussed earlier, with the notion of diminishing returns, which we discussed a little bit later than that. In the upper left, I've drawn a total product curve that I used to call, and I will continue to call, type 1. That is, the total product curve is concave. In the upper right, I've drawn a total product curve of the shape that I call type 2, which is first convex and then concave. Below each of them, respectively, I've drawn the corresponding average product and marginal product curve. For type 1, the ones on the left, another description, instead of saying that the total product curve is concave, is to say, as I've typed up there, diminishing returns begins immediately. Now the law of diminishing returns says that eventually marginal product is going to fall. And the law of diminishing returns is always true for all types. Diminishing returns, that is not the law of diminishing returns, but just diminishing returns, is that marginal product is falling. As you can see in the left, in type 1, marginal product is always falling. Look at the lower left-hand graph. The marginal product is always falling. In the, in the upper left-hand graph, the tangent lines are always getting flatter as you move from left to right. So an alternative description of type 1 is that diminishing returns happens always. In other words, it begins immediately. And by it begins immediately, I mean begins at 0. begins at w equals 0. So for the whole horizontal axis, for all motions along the horizontal axis, you've got diminishing returns. Whenever you move from left to right, marginal product falls. Moving now to the right-hand graphs. In these graphs, diminishing returns does not begin immediately, as I've typed up above, because marginal product starts out by increasing. In other words, you start out with increasing returns. Now the law of diminishing returns says eventually marginal product has to fall, and of course in type 2 it does eventually fall. But it's not always falling. Between w equals 0 and some other value of w, in, in this particular example, uh, let's see, marginal product falls in this region here, and you can see that more easily on the on the bottom graph, you have an initial portion of increasing returns. So diminishing returns doesn't begin immediately, it just begins after some later time. So I will still usually refer to just type 1 and type 2, but on exams and in other situations when I'm not going to use the these uh, abbreviations type 1 and type 2, which as I said are not standard abbreviations, they're just something that I myself came up with, I'll usually refer to them as diminishing returns begins immediately or diminishing returns does not begin immediately. I've inserted some typed sentences at the lower left and the next purpose is to explain what these mean. What I've written is that if marginal is greater than average, then average is rising. And if marginal is less than average, then average is falling. Again, when we talk about rising and falling, we mean as you read the graph from left to right. So let me I illustrate these with the average product and marginal product curves that I've already drawn. In the lower left-hand graph, marginal is below average. The marginal product of water, that is the blue line, is less than the average product of the water, which is the orange line. And the statement in the lower left says if marginal is less than average, so it's this case here, marginal is less than average, then average is falling. And you can see in the graph that the average product of water is falling. Now let's move to the more complicated graph in the lower right and check out these basic principles. In the beginning, m the blue line is above the average line in this region here. Blue is above average. That means marginal is above, um, <laughs> blue is above orange. That means marginal is above average. 
and the principle on the lower left says if marginal is above average, then average is rising. And you can see that in in this region here, that is the region where average is rising. In the other region, the blue line is below the orange line. In other words, marginal is below average. On the lower left, it says that if marginal is below average, then average is falling. And sure enough, in this region, the orange line is falling. So, although you don't need these, this, these principles on the lower left in order to correctly draw the graphs, they are helpful in making sure that you've drawn the graph correctly. And now, don't sometimes students will confuse the conclusion with a different conclusion. So, again, let's look at the bottom right-hand graph. The question is whether the blue line is above or below the orange line. And the conclusion is that the orange line is going to be rising or the orange line is going to be falling. The conclusion has nothing to do with the blue line. It doesn't tell you whether marginal is rising or falling. And indeed, you can see in, in this initial position in this in initial situation, marginal is rising for part of the way, and it's falling for another part. But during this whole interval, marginal is above average. And if marginal is above average, then average is rising. So during this entire interval, average is rising. Marginal is sometimes rising and sometimes falling. So you can't conclude anything about whether marginal is going up or down. It's just the, the conclusions about uh, are about whether average is going up or down. So that's the purpose of this, whether the orange lines are, are going up or going down. It doesn't tell you anything about the blue line. The premise is whether the blue line is above or below the orange line. Not whether the blue line is rising or falling, but just whether whether marginal is bigger than average or marginal is less than average. The next point is that the principles that are drawn to the lower left are actually not something specifically about economics. They're just basic mathematical properties. On the lower left, I've erased some of the marks that I made before. Now I want to discuss these two statements, not in the context of economics, but just in a general context. And the general context that I'm going to use, or the other specific example I'm going to use, has nothing to do with economics, nothing to do with this class. It has to do with exam scores, because that's something that students are very familiar with. So suppose that you've, you're taking some class, not this class, just any uh, class, and suppose that you've already taken, let's say, three exams. And on, the three, on these three exams, your average score was 80. Now suppose I tell you, on your next exam, which is the fourth exam, you scored higher than 80. And I asked, what's happened to your class average? Well, if your class average before was 80, and on your next exam, the fourth exam, you scored more than 80, then you know that your class average has gone up. Let's tie that with the principles in the lower left. Your average score was 80. Your, the score you make on your next exam is your marginal score. So the second sentence here is saying that your marginal score was bigger than your average. And that means it's the first statement in the lower left which is relevant. If the marginal is bigger than the average, then the average is rising. 
And that's exactly what it says. The average has gone up. In other words, the average is rising. Similarly, suppose on your marginal exam you made less than 80. Well, then your class average would fall, and that's exactly what what this says over here, that if marginal is less than average, an average is falling. So the principles that I've drawn on the lower left don't have anything to do with economics per se. They're just basic mathematical properties of marginal and average. And so they'll be useful for studying not merely marginal product and average product, but all different kinds of marginal averages that we do throughout the course of the course.